areas like the quantum bit of information. Turns out there are ten to about roughly ten to one hundred twenty-four bits. That's that's you multiply ten by one hundred twenty-four times. That's a pretty large number. That's a very large number. Roughly maybe some one hundred twenty, one hundred twenty-one for different. But it's like it's between so that's the amount of bit information in the entire universe. That's the amount of information in the entire universe. But but here's the thing: that entropy it's it's also proportional to the entropy. Now, that the thermodynamic entropy. But the, it's at the alpha point. At the alpha point, the area of our future horizon was one bit. It was only one bit. But it quickly the flame quickly expands. It expands it quickly saturates out to about it's 124, 10 to 124 bits. Okay, that's the that's the second law of thermodynamics. This is why, in a very simple way, this is you know all this nonsense that's happened, you know, uh, Lockschmidt paradox, all this stuff, and they were Boltzmann, and all this, all this stuff is irrelevant now because they didn't have enough information back then. But what it is, we go from one bit to 10 to 124 bits in the same direction that space is expanding and accelerating. And this was a big mystery. Why did it have to be that? In fact, in fact, when Hawking first started thinking about these problems maybe 20 years ago, he thought it wouldn't ha that wouldn't happen that way. He was thinking big crimes, things were reversed, and he corrected himself. But it was a big mystery. Why should the cosmological arrow of time, the expansion of space and the universe, be in the same direction as the thermodynamic arrow of time? It's because it's holograms. Because what's determining the entropy of the universe is really the area of that future bubble that, that we're inside, like a goldfish in a, in a goldfish goldfish ball. Amazing. So, so that's amazing. It's very simple. It's very pretty. Yeah. Very pretty picture. Yeah. But it's more than that. Turns out that the re that the Hawking radiation, the advanced wheel of Feynman Hawking radiation of the future, is creating us as holographic images. Now, this is pretty far out. It's this crazy idea, but it's crazy enough to be true. You know? Now whose idea is this? Well, this is, well, it's partly my idea. There's some Koreans that kind of have it. It's mainly my idea, I think. I'm not sure. Well, we're going to have to sort of see. But it's definitely an idea I have had. But here's the thing. You can show that these two-dimensional pixels on the future horizon, they quantize space, what are called voxels. I'm using, now, Lenny Susskind talks about pixels and voxels. It's a combination of Lenny Susskind's thing, but Lenny Susskind doesn't talk about what is it Now, what is a voxel again? A voxel is this the quantum of volume that we're in now. We're like little voxels, right? We're like holographic images. We're, we're pixel. We're, we're voxels. Okay, Lenny Susskind talks about voxels and pixels in the sense of, but Lenny doesn't talk about future to past. See, I'm using Lenny's holographic ideas of voxels and pixels, you know, two-dimensional surfaces, but he never specified. He, Lenny thinks it's the particle horizon, I think. I think Lenny thinks the, the holograms in our past. He doesn't realize that they ain't going to work. I don't think he realized it. You know, he's coming. We can discuss it. You know, but he doesn't have where, when it is. He doesn't have when the hologram is. And neither did these Koreans that uh, had a paper from Seoul, Korea. They don't, I'm saying the hologram's in our future. It's not in our past. It's our future hologram. Because that agrees with the observed value of the dark energy. Then if they compute the dark energy density from that, they're going to get too big a number. And they, they're back in this whole dilemma. See, it solves this dark energy problem. So you need back from the future effects to understand why the dark energy is so small. That's you know that's the other thing. Oh, that's 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 profound. That's a big. Problem. Nobody yeah. understands fact, why says, why there is that ratio. Yeah, this solves that solves all the problems of physics almost. It seems to. Okay, I mean, uh, I mean, Lenny calls that dark energy problem. Why why dark energy is so? He calls that the eight hundred pound elephant in the room. That's embarrassing. So everything seems to be working in a self consistent way. So what it is it's this, it's now there's the Igor Novikov. Who also talks about these co co these self consistent loops in time in, in terms of time travel? Why the no paradox in time travel? And there's this idea whether you have the chronology protection conjecture of Hawking. But look, that gets us into UFOs. If the UFOs are really here, they're coming through stargates and doing time travel. Everything is self well. I just sent you I just sent you an work. email today uh, about one of the witnesses at the Bent R E F Bentwaters uh, yeah. incident back in 1980. He was hypnotized and said that they are time travelers from our future yeah, I mean, coming back there also says to that, use us as band-aids for problems that they're having with their genetics in the future. I said that. I speculated on that in 1973 at Stanford Research Institute with Hal Putoff and Russell Talk, and it's all on video. It's all on tape. You can hear it on the Internet. We were talking about that same idea back then. So this is an old idea. But this is before any of this stuff happened with dark energy, before, you know, there's a whole... And in other words, we, we have now a, a Destiny Matrix pattern. I have a book called Destiny Matrix, you know, on Google, in which everything seems to be consistent now. 
the story is getting is 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 so consistent that it's spooky. <laughs> you know, it's like twilight. I mean, it's like twilight zone. It's spooky. There's a pattern here that instead of instead of it dissipating, the 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 storyline, the narrative here, the the, the cy decoding the cipher of Genesis. You know, what does what's the real creation? I'm the Alpha and the Omega. This whole Tihad the Shardam idea is actually beginning to fit the latest developments in cosmology and quantum gravity and and physics. Are we getting to the point where uh, we might be able to design some experiments to test some of these theories? Well, the experiment, the, 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 what I'm saying, you have to first understand the experiments that we have. Correct, correct. That's what we have today are showing right, that. That's what right, they're showing. Right. You have to design, but the answer is yes, we have examined understood what's right in front of our noses. Okay, correct. Now, now, if you're saying, if I know how to build a time machine, so can I build a, a warp drive UFO? I don't know how to do that yet. But somebody must know because we're seeing them flying in the sky, and we're seeing that, that they're neutralizing our, our our launch codes for nuclear missiles, things like. Well, that. in a way, in a way, the, these objects that we're seeing, and and these incidents that we've 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 been observing, are are similar to the data that we're getting that we don't understand now, yeah, and it gives yeah. us a reason to advance our theories to try to understand this. Exactly. There's a convergence. The bad, the good UFO data. Now a lot of crazy kooks in UFOs. I know that in paranormal. The good UFO data, the good remote viewing data, sponsored by CIA, by Defense Intelligence Agency, by the intelligence community at the highest levels. Okay, that all that is all giving now a consistent picture. We have Brian Josephson's work. He's a Nobel Prize physicist in this field. Uh, now backed up by uh, Anthony Valentini's more even more mathematical work, justifying what Brian said and what I've said. Uh, justifying what what uh, Pen Roger Penrose, you know all these people talking. Uh, Dick Bierman, now we have uh, Benini from the University of Rome. Uh, uh, it's all coming together. It's all a co consistent picture: consciousness, cosmology, quantum gravity, warp drive, time travel. It's all kind of fitting together. But a good place to stop here. Okay, that uh, ends our conversation for today with Dr. Jack Sarfati.